Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range doing some shooting with AKs. Don't ask me why, but I've been doing a lot of AK shooting, even though obviously it's warming up. If things were working properly, I would be doing more AK shooting in the winter, or so it stands to reason, because that's why I typically do the AK shooting the most. But not to get too far off in the woods, in front of me, I have three different AKs. All three of them are under folders. This is the Arsenal SAS M7 that I recently did a video on. It's an underfolder with a machined receiver, US made. And I, I love the gun, it's absolutely beautiful. On top, I have a Romanian, what is affectionately called a reverse dong kit build from Atlantic Firearms. It is an underfolding AK as well. This one is an AKM, so it has the stamped receiver. And it's a battlefield pickup, it has that distressed look to it. And we'll talk more about the underfolder and how it varies or differs from a current production Wasser 10 underfolder. This is what's currently being imported into the United States by Century Arms. And this one comes to us from our friends over at Atlantic Firearms. And it is a brand new underfolder, so the arms are stiff and lock rigidly into place, whereas the older one has quite a bit of wobble to it. But what we want to talk about is a current production Wasser as compared to a more military Wasser or AK from Romania, which is this kit build with the reverse dong on it and the underfolding stock. So let's do some shooting with these different rifles. Talk about the differences between this gun and a current production Wasser 10 and just have some fun with the 7.62 by 39 because it's such an awesome cartridge. Let's do some shooting. The current production Wasser 10s, for whatever reason, no longer come into the country with their laminate wood furniture. It's probably something Century is doing, or perhaps they're sourcing it overseas, I don't know, but you have this more blonde furniture that's clearly not a laminate. The military rifles would use a laminate wood, which is very hard, very dense, and very durable. And I don't know how this wood's going to play out. I do know that they're full stocked versions. They, uh, you might run into problems with the wood screws starting to kind of waller themselves out and stock splitting and stuff like that with this blonde furniture. A problem that did not occur with the laminate furniture like you see on this kit build from Atlantic. But there's some other differences in the rifle that's currently coming in. The most notable is the underfolder's arms. On this current production rifle, it is, it is a solid piece of steel, tube steel, that's been flat ground on the inside on both arms of the stock. Still has the detent, so it locks into place, Does, doesn't just flop around. But those arms are just a standard piece of tube steel with flat cuts identical to each other on both sides. If you take a look at this kit from a demilled rifle, these were ground from steel as well. These may look stamped, but they're not. On this side, you can see that they've dished it out, a long trough on the left arm. On the right arm, you have a cut through here and then deep scallops. So the two arms are different in how they're machined. And obviously this is to save weight. What's notable though is they are not stamped. On the Bulgarian rifle, or I should say the Arsenal rifle, it's made in the US, they're using stamped arms on the, uh, the, the stock of the rifle. Now you can tell that this one, it's got quite a bit of movement in it. And that's common for these stock types. You would see these stock types used on the German MP40 and later adopted by the Russians to be used on underfolding AKs. So really, aside from that, internally, the current production Wassers aren't much different than the older guns that I have. 
So you can see they still serial number the various parts. Stamped receiver, finish looks just okay on it. Uh, it came right out of the box with scratches all over the barrels. It wouldn't be a, a wasser if it wasn't all beat up right out of the box. So it has this brand new looking furniture and kind of a rough finish on it. But that's never really changed. The wassers have always been a rather crude firearm. But they're known for working and being a fairly good quality military grade AK for the civilian market. Retained is the ribbed top cover, which you can see on the original military kit, parts kit. So yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting gun. Now, one of the other things that's interesting about the Wassers is it's kind of hit or miss. You can look down the sights and tell if your front sight's canted or not. When I got this out of the box, I looked down the sights and sure enough, I knew I was gonna have to push my front sight way to the right to get the thing on paper. And that's exactly what happened. So if you take a look at this front sight, it's pushed way to the right and it's just barely zeroed. I didn't think I was gonna be able to zero it, but then I just cranked on that, um, the side adjustment tool even more and I got just a little bit more windage out of it and pushed that sight all the way to the right and it's shooting to point of aim at this point. Now I touched upon that in my video with the Arsenal SAS M7 that this is considered within spec. Even though your front sight may be one way or the other really far buried all the way down or sticking up almost past the protective ears, as long as you can zero the gun, it's considered usable, serviceable. So you're not going to find a company that's going to replace the gun or warranty it or fix it just because your sight isn't perfectly centered within those protective ears. Yep, good guns for the money. The only thing is the price on them has gone up. It's almost doubled over the years, but still it's, it represents a fairly good value for a true military grade AK. When we sighted the Wasser 10 UF underfolder in this afternoon, uh, we had to make some pretty big adjustments to the front sight. But we also noticed this gun was, regardless of the ammunition that we were using in it, right now we're shooting some Federal American Eagle, and it's brass-cased ammunition, which is supplied to us by our friends over at Federal Ammunition. But we're also shooting some Golden Tiger, which is stuff I always keep on hand. I found it to be very good military quality uh, ball ammunition that's sealed, and, uh, and it has a lacquered case. So we noticed this gun was basically men and a man. It's shooting massive groups at 100 meters. And so we're gonna see how lucky we get to 200 meters with this Federal ball ammunition. We got a really good stiff wind out there right now. Let's see if I can pull this off. Well, I had to figure out what my hold was. I could just barely see the rounds impacting the dirt downrange, but uh, I finally walked my fire in and figured out my hold. I'm in essence holding high and left to connect with the steel plate. And I have really cut myself with that underfolder. <laughs> I got blood pooling on the, uh, there's a really sharp edge right here. And somehow when I'm shooting, the gun recoils down and is uh, cutting into my hand. I never had that problem with underfolders before. Interesting. All right. If an AK is not biting you, it doesn't love you. I think this one loves me. <laughs> this Atlantic build of the Romanian military AK underfolder is actually one of my better shooting AKs. It's just a fun gun to shoot. I love the way it looks with the worn finish, the distressed look, and all that good stuff. It is a U.S. receiver, but it's a uh, Romanian-made uh, trunnion, front trunnion gas system. Uh, front sight block, top cover, internals, original underfolder. It just has the necessary 922R components in it. 
But aside from that, it looks like it's really, really nicely done. And I've even allowed it to get a little bit of a patina on it. It's rusting a little bit. I didn't want to use this as a Polaris gun. I wanted to use the Wasser for that. And that's because this one, even though it looks all beat up, I don't really want it completely trashed. This is more of a collectible to me because it's in true military form with its reverse dong. These uh, stocks can be kind of difficult to find right now if you're trying to build a kit like this rifle. So the Wasser, we're gonna see how she holds up. We're just gonna throw it in the black box in the back of the Polaris and it's just gonna be the range AK in case we need a rifle for some purpose. Yeah, I just love the way this gun shoots. And it's like the way all AKs shoot, to be honest with you. I never met an AK I didn't like. <laughs> the reason why I wanted this Wasserton UF underfolder was because I wanted something to keep in the Polaris that I didn't have to take out all the time. And this rifle was gonna serve that purpose. And so I really don't care how beat up it gets because its whole point in life is to be mistreated. So it'll be stored with a loaded magazine in it, empty chamber, safety on, and simply, thrown in there so that if I need a rifle, I'll have it with me at all times. The Polaris, I can't find a way to really mount a rifle rack in it to keep a rifle in the front or anywhere else. So I said, why not just pick up a cheap Wasser underfolder and just throw it in the black box we always have in the back of the Polaris. All right, so we're gonna do some more shooting at 250 yards with the Wasser 10 using the Federal Ammunition. All right. Not perfect, but good enough for me. <laughs> On the SAS M7, one of the reasons I love the looks of this rifle is because it has a much nicer finish than the Wasser. But here on the end, it has this more traditional slant cut to the receiver. This would be used even on the Woodstock versions of the milled receiver at AKs because the stocks came down at a rake. You'll find that cut on a lot of the old Chinese import AKMs as well. So it just looks more aesthetically pleasing with that slight cut to it. The Wassers just have this really abrupt right edge. <laughs> it's not as elegant looking, but every bit is functional. I just think that uh, it would look a lot nicer if they had a, a slight slant cut to it. But this is because this exact same receiver would be used with the laminate stock set, which also does not have a slant cut in the rear. It will be right angled cut, so it makes sense that they would carry that over to the underfolder. Whoa, look at that. It missed its detent. Now, one thing we noticed about this thing when we took it out of the box was this, this stock is really, really tight and it doesn't pop very positively into its locking detents. So when we push the button here on the receiver to release the stock, you really have to apply some pressure to get this thing to fold. And then you'll see that button hasn't popped back out even though it's in the folded position. So you kind of have to push it and it kind of pops out and, and locks in the folded position as it should. 
If you push that button in, it takes quite a bit of force, and this thing can go, it just missed its detent, and can go right past it and rotate all the way around. But it should stop right there and have the button pop out. Over time, this will break in and it'll catch that detent and won't go over the top like it did there. But again, very crude, crude rifles, but highly functional. With a high quality piece like this, you get some pretty high quality packaging. When you get your Wasser, it's gonna come in a box like this with Century's markings on it. Inside, you're gonna find exceptionally crude packaging. The rifle was folded and stuffed into this cardboard, presumably to protect it. <laughs> and, and then it comes with something of an owner's manual a warranty card. Wow, this wind is ferocious today. And just packing paper. And it'll be bulging at the seams because they double over the protective foam in the case. But yeah, don't expect much in the way of packaging when you buy a Wasser, despite the fact that they cost 800 bucks still. Well, overall, the Wasser 10 underfolder is a neat rifle. It's crude, the finish is far from perfect, the blonde wood, I mean, I don't know if they're putting it on there to make it look more attractive. I'd much rather have the original laminate military furniture. Maybe that's just not available anymore. I don't know. And it comes with, you know, plenty of scratches into the finish. It's leaching out some sort of a chemical here by the, the gas block. Has right edges that'll cut your hands. The stock may or may not lock properly and it's notches for a while until it starts to break in a little bit. And your front sight most likely is gonna be nowhere near centered in the protective ears all for the low, low price of $800. For what I want to use it for, it's perfect. You can pick up PSA rifles now that are going to be a lot prettier than this. And in my experience with the two PSA AKs I have right now that I'm shooting and evaluating, they've been 100% reliable, but they're less than this gun by a good amount of money. So it used to be these things were the affordable gun on the market at $450, $500. Now that they're coming in at $800, and that may just be because of the underfolder, which is a little bit less common than the full stocked rifle. You can get American made counterparts if you just want a beater gun that will serve that purpose just as well. This guy, I love it because it's such a rustic classic looking Romanian Cold War era underfolding AK with the reverse dong. This dong, it's kind of awkward to hold it like this, but if you use it as a hand stop, it actually gives a very modern feel to the rifle. And so a lot of people you'll see actually cutting these, which I'd never do because these things are, the stocks themselves are becoming harder to find. But some folks will cut these so that they, and, and you know, actually set it up to use it as a hand stop. But the gun shoots extremely well. And it's just a beautiful kit build. Very well done by Atlantic Firearms. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video of us taking out the Wasser 10 UF underfolder for the first time to get it sighted in. And this going forward will be the Polaris's truck gun, if you will. So you'll see it occasionally in video every once in a while. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. We're supported by you, our viewing audience. We don't take money from Century Arms or Atlantic Firearms or anything like that. We're supported by you so we can bring you honest, unbiased information. And that's how we do it. Patreon. Another way to do it is to consider supporting us right here on YouTube. We have a little join button that'll appear right underneath the video player, either on your browser, on your desktop, or on your mobile device. Give that join button a click and check out some of the perks. Consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Guys, thanks for 12 years of support. We'll talk to you soon.